Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video I'm going to uh, solve one example regarding buckling, the continue of the previous examples and it's a little bit more advanced. Uh, in this example we are going to combine the last two examples. Uh, one was rotational spring and the other one was uh, transitional spring and now we are going to combine these two together. So consider the same rigid bars that we had in the previous example at point A and point B, the roller, and here we have the S-spring and also a rotational S-spring. The left bar is with the length of L and the right one is with the length of 2L. We can assume that the S-spring has the constant stiffness of K and the rotational S-spring with C. So let's go through some numbers. If, if you remember M equals K theta, this is the rotational S-spring coefficient. So as a result, the unit of K or K theta is kilonewton meter per radian and force is K delta and this is the uh, stiffness of a ordinary S-spring. So delta uh, K will be kilonewton per meter. So if I divide k theta by k, it will be kilonewton meter divided by kilonewton per meter. So it will be meter square per radian. So now if I assume that k theta is c, then c over k will be m square divided by radian. And I can assume it equals to alpha L power by 2. It means that alpha is a constant. And L power by 2 represents a meter S square. As a result, I can assume that C is alpha K L power by 2. So it makes it easier to calculate the entire question. So I assume this is alpha K L2. And now we are going to discuss about the value of alpha. If you remember, we solved one example only with the rotational spring and it was uh, completely stable, while with the ordinary spring, it was unstable. Now, the target of this example is to calculate the minimum value of alpha that the behavior of this system will change from unstable to be stable. Theta, theta over 2, and now I can write down delta horizontal at B will be L minus L cosinus theta plus 2L minus 2L cosinus theta over 2. And then suppose that the system is under load P, then the energy lost because of the movement will be P minus P times delta horizontal at point P will be minus PL, 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. And then we calculate the stored energy inside these two springs. So for the first one, it will be 1 over 2k delta power by 2. For the other one, it will be 1 over 2c relative theta power by 2. So delta will be L sinus 
theta and theta relative will be theta plus theta over 2, 3 theta over 2. Substituting these two to a stored potential energy will be 1 over 2 K del sinus theta power by 2 plus 1 over 2 C 3 over 2 theta power by 2. So it will be KL2 over 2 sinus 2 theta plus 9 over 8 C theta power by 2. Now I can write the total potential energy as a function of theta W plus V, which will be KL2 over 2 sinus 2 theta plus 9 over 8 D theta 2 minus PL1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. Um, it is easier if first we assume theta is very small and as a result sinus theta will be theta and 1 minus cosinus theta will be 1 over 2 theta power by 2. Just to find out a uh, uh, value for P0. So then pi theta will be KL2 theta power by 2 divided by 2, 9 over 8 C theta 2 minus PL, 1 over 2 theta power by 2 plus theta over 2 power by 2. Pi theta will be KL2 over 2 theta 2 plus 9 over 8 C theta square minus PL. So it will be PL theta square. And then I can make the first derivative rhomb pi by respect of theta will be KL2 theta plus 9 over 4 C theta minus 3 over 2 PL theta. So there will be two results first is theta equals 0 so here I can substitute C as alpha KL2 then P will be 2 third KL times 1 plus 9 over 4 alpha so to have a good answer or to solve it easier I assume alpha is 0 it means that there is no rotational spring as a result, P0 will be 2 third of KL. This is the same value that we got in the former examples. Now we come back to our total potential energy equation. Pi theta is KL2 over 2 sinus 2 theta plus 9 over 8. C theta power by 2 minus PL. I can rewrite also C as uh, alpha KL2. Theta power by 2 minus PL. 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. Now we make the derivative of pi by respect of theta then it will be kl2 sinus theta cosinus theta plus 9 over 4 alpha kl2 theta minus pl sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2 and if we equal this equation to 0 we can find the p critical as a function so P critical will be KL times sinus theta cosinus theta plus 9 over 4 alpha theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. I divide either sides of this equation by 2 thirds of KL and 
as you remember we name p critical over this one as a dimension less like lambda then lambda can be written as 3 over 2 sinus theta cosinus theta plus 9 over 4 alpha theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. The other thing that we have to check is where this system is uh, stable for this for this i will go with the second derivative of the total potential energy on 2 pi by respect of theta will be kl2 cosinus theta cosinus theta minus sinus theta sinus theta plus 9 over 4 alpha kl2 minus pl cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 and it should be greater than 0 to be stable now it means that p should be less than kl cosinus 2 theta this is cosinus 2 theta plus 9 over 4 alpha divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 I can divide both sides of this with 2 third of KL. As a result, this value is lambda. So lambda should be less than 3 over 2 cosinus 2 theta plus 9 over 4 alpha divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 so this is the uh, condition that the system will remain stable and we have also the lambda itself now i can use matcat lambda as a function of alpha and theta will be 3 divided by 2 times sinus theta times cosinus theta plus 9 over 4 times alpha times theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. The condition to be stable lambda s as a function of alpha and theta will be 3 divided by 2 times cosinus 2 theta plus 9 over 4 times alpha divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 times cosinus theta divided by 2. Now let's assume theta is from 0 to p over 2 and now I can sketch the or plot this equation so as far as this is a 2D sketch for lambda and theta I have to assume a value of alpha here if you remember we had the same equation earlier and we can sketch also lambda s to check its stability so here if you remember we had the uh, 
same sketch in the other example that we solved it for the similar question so it is completely unstable now let's assume that alpha is uh, almost infinity so it is 10,000 for example so here we can see that if alpha is infinity it goes to the other example that we solved so rotational spring is uh, is very stiff and as a result it can take the the load and it will remain stable now the question here is that what is the optimal or minimum value of c that the, the the behavior of the system changes so let's go with some values first of all let's go with for example one or let's go with two okay it is still stable let's go with one and one here we can see that okay uh, if I want to sketch or explain better I will go with the value of zero now we can go with 0 0.5 So here we can see that how the uh, behavior is changing. If we want to see with the bigger domain. So here. So here you can see that uh, with the value of uh, alpha to be zero. So it is not a stable. And then if we uh, increase the value to 0 0.5 you can see that still the behavior is not stable with the red illustration and if we go for example with the value of 1 We have to increase the domain. Yes, here. You can see that with the value of 1, it's still starting with being uh, unstable. So now the question is, if we go with another value like 2, So here you can see that the behavior is now changing to be more stable. Now we are looking for a value that the uh, system will be stable with increasing the value of alpha. So let me go with the, these values. Here we can see better illustration now. Can print this and put it on this on our note when alpha is zero the system is unstable by increasing alpha the system is getting 
to be stable. Now, what is the minimum value of alpha that the system behavior changes from unstable to stable. We are going to check uh, with uh, what value of alpha uh, the performance of the system would change from unstable to stable. So now we are looking for the value of alpha in a way that the behavior of the system is changed from unstable to be stable. And according to the graph, it shows it should be something between 1 and 2, as you can see. So one method is calculating graphically, and the other method is checking with the calculation. So for, for that reason, it is easier if we go with simplification. So lambda is 3 over 2 sinus theta cosinus theta plus 9 over 4 alpha theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. And also lambda needs to be less than 3 over 2 cosinus theta, cosinus 2 theta, plus 9 over 4 alpha, divided by cosinus theta, plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. So we are going to determine the value of alpha in a way that this equation can fulfill for any value of theta and alpha, lambda is less than the calculated equation. So if I substitute lambda in this uh, equation, so then it will be 3 over 2 sinus theta cosinus theta plus 9 over 4 alpha times theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. It should be always less than 3 over 2 times cosinus 2 theta plus 9 over 4 alpha divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. Now I can simplify. Uh, it is easier if I assume that this numerator is A. Denominator of the lambda is B, and the other side is C and D. So A over B should be less than C over D, or C over D minus A over B should be greater than zero. So it means that I have a function, which is the function of alpha and theta, and it's c over t minus a over b. And I want for uh, to have f to be always greater than 0. So it means that the minimum value of f for any of alpha and theta should be 0. Also, for finding the minimum value, we need to take the First derivative of force by respect of theta and make it to be zero. So here we have two equations then. First equation f equals to zero and then round f by respect of theta is zero. So then we have two equations and two unknowns which are alpha and theta. F was C over D minus A over B.
and round f by respect of theta will be i can simplify this bc minus ad divided by bd round f by respect of theta will be round b by respect of theta times c plus round c by respect of theta times b minus round a by respect of theta times d plus round d by respect of theta times a and then times b d minus round b by respect of theta times d plus round d by respect of theta times b times b c minus a d divided by denominator power by 2 so now if this is 0 this is 0 from the first equation b c minus a d will be 0 so if we look at the second equation this sentence will be vanished and also we can see that to have this fraction to be zero the numerator should be zero numerator is round b round theta times c plus round c round theta times b minus round a round theta times d plus round d round theta times a times b and d equals zero so now we have two equations and two unknown i can rewrite this latest one as round bc minus ad by respect of theta times b times d equals to zero so two equations and for the rest we can go through matcap and consider that what is a what is b what is c what is d so i will write down one more time that lambda equals a over b and lambda needs to be less than c over d so we have everything here now let's calculate a is a function of theta and alpha and it's going to be 3 divided by 2 times numerator of this lambda equation then b as a function of theta it is denominator of lambda c is a function of theta and alpha 3 divided by 2 times numerator of stability condition and then d is a function of theta which is the denominator so now function of f is bc minus ad i can write down function of f is bc minus ad times d and the other function let's say g theta and alpha will be the derivatives by respect of theta 
Alt F. Times B and D. Now we can solve these two equations. I just put them here that they are visible. Function f, function g, and now we can open one solver block. That I guess. So we know that the perfect solution is when theta is zero. So theta should be zero. But if you solve it with that, as far as the uh, solution might not be reasonable, it is better to go with the value close to zero. Also, alpha guess, uh, it is better if you go with the reasonable number that we can see from the graph. For example, something between 1 and 2. And then this equation needs to be 0. Do not forget to change the variables to guess values if you are using this way. And then here you can simply write find that I guess and alpha yes. So it shows that with the value of 1.926, the behavior of the system will be changed. Here we can see how it looks like if I go with. 1.926 1.926 so here we can see that okay and then for this value we can calculate what is the peak critical at theta equals to zero so we can calculate lambda for the calculated option and alpha was 1.926 so here we can see that it's uh, zero cannot be the answer because theta cannot be zero in this calculation that's why it didn't solve it. Now we can see that it's almost 5.334. This is lambda. And compared to without any rotational capacity, so it was one. We can see that how bending a stiffness later on would affect the calculation here we can see that with the uh, the value of alpha to be 1.926 then the behavior will be changed and also the minimum or the critical load will be increased so the alpha critical will be 1.926 the minimum alpha that the system behavior will change from unstable to be stable so this was the end of this example i hope you understood 
how to calculate the uh, minimum stiffness of this spring in order to change the behavior of the uh, rigid element from being uh, unstable to be stable. Thank you and see you in next video.